Oh, I forgot what I was doing then. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and we're relegated to the orange pen because all the other ones just seem to have fucking crapped out on us. So, this is about two stroke. Um, we were talking about engine braking and um, direct injection and oiling, and even if you have direct injection, you've still fucked your emissions because of the oiling situation. Um, so, someone asked, why not pump? like four strokes so the reason why we don't pump oil into the crankcase like you do with a four stroke um, is because there are different bearings in a four stroke than there are a two stroke so a lot of you guys who are asking this question probably have never seen inside a four stroke before um, or you just can't fathom it for some reason you know which is fine, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking taking the piss or anything. Um, so in a in a in a in a in a in a, in a, in a two-stroke, I will get it out. In a two-stroke, you have um, roller ball bearings with their what the fuck have I done there? Roller ball bearings with a um, inner and outer race. There are actually one entire component. So you have the inner race, the outer race, and the balls and the spacing cage inside as one complete system. And you install and uninstall this. Um, obviously, you all know that, you know. And you basically, uh, you usually do a press fit, or you can heat it and sweat it in if you want. If you don't have a press or what have you. Um, and these bearings are open to the outside world, you know, they don't have any shielding on or anything because of the oiling um, supply comes from the fuel that has to wash in there with your petrol and so on. Um, so, the difference is with a four stroke is, now you do get four strokes like this, so when you get your one two fives that are vertically split cases, you still have pressing bearings like this, um, some even the bigger ones. You know, some of the like the K uh, the XT350 I do know has um, ball bearings like this, basically caged uh, roller ball bearings um, that are you know exactly the same as a two stroke. However, when you get to multiple cylinder bikes and all the rest of it, you um, have your main shaft, you have your web, your web crank pin, and then you have another main journal, you have another web. And that straight away you've got a problem there because you cannot get this bearing onto there. But what you can do is you can use plain bearings. But the difference, you might say, yes, but Matt, plain bearings are split. So plain bearings, what the fuck am I doing here? Plain bearings, like so, plain bearings that are in your crankshaft require oil pressure. Now I will do a video people have been asking about um, oil oil pressure um, and oil film um, oil film retention and uh, surface pressure and all that other good stuff more engineering related stuff we will get into that but this is just the basic video for the two stroke guys mainly who don't understand uh, what's going on so a uh, four stroke bearing will have um, a web like this and then you'll have a plain bearing that sits inside there, it's one half, you then have a mirror image of this sat on top and your crankshaft will live in between. Now Motorman is going to explain to us exactly how the, mysteri the mysterious world of um, plain bearings and crank bearings work, but because I haven't done that video yet, let's just go with um, me guessing exactly what happens basically what you have is you have an oil feed that comes off your main gallery and the oil basically bleeds into here and basically covers this entire bearing surface with an oil film so in a sense your crankshaft is floating on an oil film it is floating on a bed of oil so it shouldn't when the pressure is um, when the oil pressure is high enough the, in a sense the crankshaft floats to a certain degree it tries to force the oil out um, and it does squish the oil out, but the oil is constantly being replaced by your oil pump, which is under pressure, which lifts the crankshaft. Now, there's a lot of dynamics and stuff to do with that, and like I say, we will go into that 
so don't shit the bed just yet if you asked for that video. But basically, um, you know, that's how a two-stroke oil system works. Well, why can't we do that for a two-stroke? Uh, various reasons why you can't do that. But you, you could, yeah, you could if you wanted to, but in a sense, it's quite pointless. So why won't it work? Well, you have to look at a four-stroke system. So you have your main, you have these half bearings, these shell bearings, these plain bearings. And what they do is they're supplied with a constant feed of oil at a certain pressure. This is to basically, like I said, let's just create this oil film that can withstand the compressive pressure, fuck off, <laughs> the compression pressure of the crank, you know, firing when it fires. It's not all the time, it's just at certain intervals. And what happens is, is that if we look at your main journal here, and then you have your block here, like so, and then you have your shell bearing in between, you have this oil been pumped into here to create this oil film, but it does squirt back out. It does squirt back out of your bearings, and then it, sump, it basically runs back into your sump, your pump picks it back up, and then your pump basically sends it um, back to these bearings. It's a constant feed system. It's a circulatory system, basically. That's the best way to think about it. Just like your blood in your veins. So, you have cranks. You have your crank there. You have your oil pump there, like so. You have a sump here. And basically, the oil pump picks up the oil from the sump. It sends it to the main gallery, to the crank and then the crank weeps out oil and then it drips back down into your sump. The problem with a two stroke is, is you're using a crankcase breathing around your crank here. But all this has to be open to the system, which means that any petrol flowing into your engine will dilute the shit out of this oil and your oil will basically just dilute to absolute crap and then it doesn't have um, the viscosity it doesn't have the thickness it doesn't have the um, oh, what's the bloody word it doesn't have the compressive resistance in a sense I'm just trying to another word but I'm trying to think of a word that it, yeah it doesn't have the thickness that's the best way to think about it so the oil doesn't have the thickness to be able to lift up this crank anymore because you've watered down the shit out of it you know and not only that is now all of a sudden your crank case has to have this pump and this sump and all the other galleries and what have you and then the petrol is going to dilute this oil and it's going to start going into your oil pump and it's going to go start going down to your galleries and it's just this feedback system and because your oil hasn't got the density that it requires because it hasn't got the viscosity the thickness it requires to hold up this crankshaft you are going to be burning out your bearings so plain bearings are not um, suitable for a two-stroke system with a crank crankcase breathing um, layout. It's just not. It'll dilute the shit out of your oil and basically the petrol will start to decompose your oil and then you'll just get separation. You'll just have all this which will be all the thick stuff, all this will be the water down crap. You can always tell, um, you know, diesels can suffer from this quite bad when they get gas blow by and all the rest of it. Things start to wear out because all that happens is, is the crankshaft puts pressure on this oil film it's in here like so and it just squishes it out because it's viscosity has gone down it's frictional resistance it's stiction everything has just gone to tits because it's been watered down by petrol and it just pisses out and the bear you, you basically your um your oil pressure will just fall it'll just fall and you cannot maintain it because petrol is a solvent it is a hydrocarbon solvent and it's just going to turn you you know your um your oil into mush. You know, we have a crankshaft that we have to lubricate. Um, we have a crankshaft that we have to lubricate, and the problem with this crankshaft is, is this crankshaft is fitted in the crankcase that we use for pumping. So, because we have to move this, uh, the fluid, the charge from one from one region to another to basically get our timing, uh, to have our induction, this crankshaft it needs oil, poor little bastard. It needs oil, and if we expose the crankshaft to like we do with two-stroke, uh, four-stroke oil with a gallery-fed 
oil pressurized system that, you, that runs on plane bearings. Yeah, and someone's going to say, well, why can't you just use the crank, the bearings from a two stroke and just give them the same oil? It doesn't matter how you give them oil, you can drip feed them, you can use any kind of, you know, a fling in system or whatever. You can use whatever system, you can have injectors and spray oil at them. At the end of the day, that oil is either going to be burned in combustion, which it will be, but even if you aren't really that bothered about that, the oil itself will be watered down to the point where it cannot be used in a pressure-fed pressure system um, with plain bearings. So you're stuck with caged bearings, and because you're stuck with caged bearings, um, you know, which won't drop, that's the thing, caged bearings will just stay the way they are, but you will either spray to... Oh, excuse me. <laughs> you can spray four-stroke oil at them, which will then add into the, you know, it'll turn into a mist inside here because everything's turning at the speed of light. It'll turn into a mist and it'll be burned, fail emissions. Or if you try and feed it with an oil pressure system like you do a four-stroke, it will end up falling to the bottom of the crankcase into some kind of sump and the petrol will get at that, the gasoline will get at that. It will mix with this. And the other thing is as well is you'll actually start to fill up your crankcase because as the petrol starts to dilute with your oil, it will literally start to fill up because, and you might think, well, why doesn't that happen with a, four, a normal two-stroke? It's because this entire crankcase heats up and the, the petrol that does uh, condense inside the engine will evaporate into the floor. Where with this, it's been picked up by a pump, it's been sent out to here, it picks up more heat, it will evaporate, and it will go through this backwards and forwards of condensing, evaporating, condensing, evaporating, condensing, evaporating. The other thing is as well is that another thing another thing you need to consider is that um, a lot of two-stroke cooling comes from the fresh charge, the oil and the fuel that enters the cylinder every time it's on its intake slash compression stroke, the two strokes. Um, you know, that air and fuel that comes in is from your tank, your oil tank or your premix if it's just in your fuel tank, but that's actually quite cold and obviously petrol evaporates and when it evaporates it takes a lot of heat with it so when it comes in and it sloshes and hits your crank and it hits your walls and your bearings and when it gets transferred into your cylinder it hits the cylinder wall and it hits the cylinder wall on the exhaust side because it's transferred into exhaust it helps cool all that down extract some of that heat and helps it evaporate and if you remove if you remove that system then your you know your engine is going to overheat Proper brain fart there, I forgot where I was completely going. Yeah, so if your fuel and air comes in, that fuel, oh, excuse me, that fuel and air, let's just say that fuel and air is ambient temperature in your tank, so let's just say it's 20 degrees C, that's coming into your engine and then it's extracting heat, it's evaporating, absorbs that heat and it gets combusted. Obviously your engine is constantly making, making excess waste heat if it's doing its job properly. Um, with a system like this, if you had an oil feed system, it would just get hotter and hotter and hotter. Um, your fuel and air would still come into your crankcase, but if you stop that completely and cut that off, um, this oil that's been bled into this system is like a, a four-stroke. A lot of four-strokes have oil coolers, or a lot of four-strokes have big enough sumps that it can dump a lot of the heat down here while it sits and waits to get picked up. But a lot of these bikes do actually have... Um, Oh, what's the word? Oil coolers. You know, if they have a, a, a cooling issue or what have you with the actual oil. So that's what it's all about. It seems like an easy solution. Just oil it like a four-stroke. But you've got to remember that the crank that you are trying to actually oil is exposed to your fuel and air mix. Um, which means that any oil that you have to stick in here will get burned and it will be diluted. Now let's just say you went for a KTM system and used a transfer, a transfer port injection. So your fuel, get rid of the title, your fuel doesn't add into any of this. Your fuel basically just gets sprayed up here like so and it basically is kept away from all of this system. Could you do that? The fact of the matter is, is that the air coming in, you get a thing, in crank, uh, you get a thing inside uh, crankcases get a lot with, um, it's more of a thing that we talk about 
with uh, four strokes, we've got a thing called windage. Basically, you've got this giant crankshaft that's just spinning around. Now, if the crankshaft webs are just two, if they are just two solid cylinders like this, the only thing you're going to suffer from, in a sense, the only windage you're going to suffer from, is the air interacting with the surface area, and it's going to give that air a bit of a twist. However, you have a great big fucking crank pin like this with a bloody con rod attached to it and in a sense it's like a stirrer so all the air inside and then there's pressure changes and fucking air coming in and air being transferred this whipping around will churn up all this oil as it starts to get flung from your bearings because you'll want to you know you'll have a hole cross drilled from your main crank journal here to your actual big end and uh, because that's what the, you know that's exactly what four strokes do they have an oil feed that goes into the main journal it whips around here and then it's transferred through the actual crankshaft into your big end and we'll do more about that when we do four stroke oiling systems um, but this is going to just whip out you know this is going to centrifugally whip out and it's particles you know it, it's it's atomized just like injection in a sense it's atomized flung the air is going to pick it up and it's still going to take it into your transfer port it's still going to get blasted with fuel and then it's going to get burned so you're still burning your oil again that's the biggest problem the difference with four strokes is that in a sense they are sealed you have oil control rings oil scraper rings and they basically remove the the cylinder above the the piston is a separate volume to the crankcase below apart from gas blow by but again, this is why we have all these oil control rings, and this is the reason why you don't have them on two strokes, because there isn't enough oil to control, which I've said before. Um, if people don't understand this, you know, leave comments, whatever. You know, the whole point of me doing these videos is to try and to explain in the simplest way possible, either show you with demonstrations, show you on the board, analogies, stuff like that, or videos, other pictures I can show you. If you don't understand, leave it in the comments, tell me exactly what you don't understand and I'll try and do another video or whatever to try and make it blatantly clear or what have you. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.